It is my privilege to introduce the keynote speaker for this year's conference. You see his name here on the screen, Terry Connolly. And he's from General Motors. Terry grew up in central New York near Syracuse, earning his Bachelor of Science degree in mechanical engineering from Princeton. Thanks for the kind words, Dale, and good morning. It's a pleasure for me to be down here this morning. I can provide maybe a little bit of a customer perspective here and offer you some of the challenges that we see from the auto business, which I hope you'll find interesting. And I'm going to challenge you that reinventing the tire will indeed be something that's necessary to do. I'll say about the same set of timelines, and it's no small set of challenges really for either of us. There's some mega trends going on, which you and we in the auto business need to recognize. The world's becoming much more urbanized. Look at the dark line here. When most of you were born, the world was about 80% rural. By the time you die, it'll be about two-thirds urban. Congestion and parking are huge issues in these cities. And as vehicle traffic slows down, guess what? CO2 emissions per mile go up. So somebody has to break this paradigm. Something has to break this paradigm. You'll find every city around the world has some policy initiatives that deal with this. Several of them even have things like congestion charges. They have policies to take away parking spots, if you can believe that. They're all aimed at basically deterrence of use of personal vehicles in the city centers. Others basically have chosen to mandate a lot of other opportunities here to try and drive that personal usage down, where things like hybrids and electrics actually don't have that much of an advantage. Some people use vehicles with very light load down at the bottom corner. Some with very heavy loads, where things like diesel engines have long proved that they have very substantial advantages. Now for city center, and I'll say even metropolitan usage, the lower left on this chart is where people are tending to operate. And there are a lot of significant opportunities to do something different. And this is the area where these alternatives are starting to emerge, which is fundamentally why you see battery electric vehicles and what we call E-Rev, the extended range electric vehicle, and fuel cells and so forth emerging. There's enormous pressure on efficiency improvement in literally every aspect of a vehicle's parasitic losses. And that's obviously where the tire becomes conspicuous. These old elements of vehicle automotive DNA that are shown here would turn into new elements of things, the vehicles that would be energized by electricity and hydrogen, powered by electric motors, controlled electronically, connected vehicles, autonomous driving capability, and a vehicle that's very tailored to specific usage, like city center usage. And you can call us asleep as an industry if you want, but we basically have introduced a lot of technology aimed at fuel efficiency over the last 25 years. And basically what we've delivered is 1% to 2% per year for the last 25 years. So huge challenge to step that up to 5%. That challenge is going to create also a huge business opportunity for automotive suppliers. And many of these may be actually brand new entrants to the automotive supply world that are really not even in that business right now. I think in everyone's vision, tires remain the linchpin of every dynamic aspect of what a vehicle is. And the tire industry has a very long and I'll say productive history of continuous improvement, which we'll talk about here in a second, that benefits the vehicle. And you form very productive and what I'll say is mutually beneficial relationships with auto manufacturers really since the early part of the 20th century. But I'll argue that some of that same stability may disable reinventing the tire. And we have a deep list of challenges for you, which I'll get to here in a second. And finding solutions to some of the long-standing problems that I've talked about here and finding them fast may be just as critical to your business as it is to our business. And I'll say as with everything else around the auto business, there's really no easy path. The customers want fuel economy, but they also want acceleration, stopping distance, evasive maneuvering, et cetera. We're probably to the extent of where the best performers were a decade ago. So here comes my set of challenges to you specifically. I see a number of areas where we expect reinvention of the tire. And if I do a sort of cursory look at 100 years of tire technical history, there's a pretty hard-hitting set of things that happened in the early years of the industry, basically leading up to World War II. The pneumatic tire, obviously, in 1889. The Schrader valve in 1898. Braided steel wire beads. The tubeless tire. I didn't realize this was actually invented in 1903, not introduced until about 50 years later in the automotive industry. Tread designs for traction. Carbon black, synthetic rubber tires. And then 
I'll give Michelin the credit they deserve for the introduction of a radial tire on the 1948 Doshevo. Very, obviously, very substantial change to the industry. But I'll say that the tire development arguably became much more incremental after that. In the 40s, wire cords of nylon. In the early 60s, polyester fiberglass. The all-season tire in 1977. The sealant tire in the early 80s. Silica filler in the early 90s. Self-supporting run flaps in the early 90s. And the insert supported unseatable run flap in the late 90s. And by the way, I'm sure that there could be some great arguments started over lunch here in terms of who was first with all those things. I know at least in the automotive end of the business, the arguments about who technically came first. Partly because you do things like technical conferences and share ideas are always very prominent. Now, I don't want to minimize the amount of really good incremental improvement that's gone on in the last 30 years or so. In fact, I use this slide, kind of a complicated thing here, but use this comparison slide within GM to illustrate just how incredible engineering optimization is. I'm basically showing you three decades of tire improvement there. And you see very substantial improvement. Outward's better on this. It's very substantial improvement in things like rolling resistance, which I know is going to be a key subject here this afternoon. Cornering coefficient, wet traction, et cetera. So there's really substantial stuff going on. Indeed, cost and quality aren't even on this chart, but are very substantial improvements your industry's made as well. But I'll say it doesn't reflect a change in tire DNA. And my observation would be that in my lifetime, the tire industry's got this very strong history of industrial innovation. And even, I'll say, product innovation outside the auto industry. But it's time to help drive more automotive product innovation. Here's what you're up against. The Cruze, which happens to be the number one conventional powertrain in the U.S. for that 42 mile per gallon highway fuel economy. You represent about 12% of the mechanical energy consumption of this vehicle. Now, obviously, that depends on what specific car we're talking about and so forth. But the Cruze is fairly representative, I'll say. I'm going to expand this efficiency challenge, though, well beyond just working on new compounds or tread profiles. I think it's time to re-examine your basic tire rim configuration. This base, the basic J profile safety rim. There has to be a more optimal approach. I cannot name another part of the vehicle that has not changed in 50 years. And I guess when you start talking about inch designations of rims, it's a dead giveaway that maybe things have been a little bit too stable there. And I hope I've provided some thoughts to keep you awake in the long technical sessions today and tomorrow. You've got a great area of industry. And some of the most interesting, I'll say, prominent industrial innovations come from the tire industry. But I think it's going to change. And I think your technical community needs to be on the forefront of that change. I know that GM's very interested in hearing your thoughts on all those challenges. My guess is if my competitors were in the room, they'd be pretty interested as well. Thanks. I hope you have a pretty inspired conference here. Thank you, Mr. Hoffman. Thank you, Your Honor.